we stand on the shoulders of giants. The past creates the opportunities we claim. Wayne Nitschke for Illinois. All the way for the touchdown. Harper dribbles, shoots long. There it goes. It's good. The Illinois win. Steven Arno. Big Ten title. Coming home to Champaign. We will continue the legacies from the past. What Illinois has been. what it means to represent the fighting Illini. Welcome to the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the MC for this Hall of Fame celebration, former men's basketball manager, former sports director and current morning news anchor for CBS2 Chicago, Ryan Baker. ILL. ILL. That sounds great. I know it was a tough night across the street at Memorial Stadium, but the sun did get up, did rise this morning and this afternoon here at the State Farm Center. The stars will be shining as we celebrate the Illini Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2020. Now, the past year during the pandemic has felt like a time warp or the twilight zone. Don't check your phones or your calendars. Yes, I said the class of 2020, even though it's September of 2021, we had a little bit of thing that kind of delayed everything last year, but here we are today and we want to make sure that all of our honorees today get their just due and we celebrate them. So we're looking forward to that. Let's give them all a round of applause. They look so great here. All of our Illini greats past and present. Now, just to clarify, the plan moving forward is to announce a Illini Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2021 before the end of this year, by the end of 2021, which will feature Illinois athletes who've excelled before this modern era of sport. Then next spring, this coming spring, we look forward to getting back on schedule and announcing the Hall of Fame class of 2022 and so many deserving candidates in the pipeline. So just to let you know that's coming. But today belongs to the class of 2020. So congratulations to all of you. Um, as a proud alum of the University of Illinois and a former fighting Illini basketball manager. I'm an honored member of the Varsity Eye Association, which honors all former fighting Illini letter winners. So this weekend, it's kind of a two for one. We're combining Varsity Eye Weekend with the Hall of Fame Weekend. So we're getting the best of both worlds. And as we move along today, we're gonna to be highlighting this week's 2021 Varsity Eye Award winners. And we're gonna hear from our Achievement Award winner, my good friend, Mark Steinberg, in addition, to the 2020 Hall of Fame class members. Now, before we get started today, I'm looking out of the audience. It seems like everybody knows all of the COVID pandemic rules. Per University of Illinois policy, it's required that masks are worn at all times unless you're actively eating, drinking, or emceeing. Okay, but um, uh, In all the indoor facilities. So we respect, respectfully ask that you comply with this policy. Uh, for all of our honorees, of course, you can remove your mask when you come to the podium to accept your award and share some words with us if you feel comfortable doing so. There are restrooms here at the State Farm Center in the main concourse. And if you didn't get an event program, don't worry, there's plenty. They're located outside in the main lobby. Now, to get us started is our fearless leader, a 14th athletic director in the history of the University of Illinois, and we will win. We promise you it's going to happen. Please welcome to the stage, Josh Whitman. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the, to the 2020 induction of the University of Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. If you're like me, there's probably not a lot that you want to remember about 2020, uh, but this class is certainly one of those things that we felt we needed to appropriately celebrate. Congratulations to all of our honorees and thank you to all of you for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Several words of thanks as we get started with the celebration today. 
First, I want to thank our sponsor, State Farm Insurance, for uh, continuing to support Illinois athletics and everything that they do. Obviously, we're standing in State Farm Center, and I uh, can't thank them enough for the way that they continue to step forward and support all the things that involve Illinois athletics. I want to thank Ryan Baker. Ryan has been such a tremendous friend of this program for so many years, represents the orange and blue in everything that he does, and we're so proud of the work that he's doing in Chicago and his tremendous presence and visibility, not only up in the Windy City, but down here in Champaign as well. I want to recognize and thank our staff in the athletic program here at the University of Illinois. You may or may not realize we now number over 300 people working day in and day out to provide your athletic program with leadership, guidance, direction, and opportunities for over 500 student athletes competing in our 21 sports. And I uh, can't thank all of them for their hard work and commitment. Uh, it, it is just a, a tremendous, tremendous group of people. Uh, I always hesitate to call out individuals. The Hall of Fame, one of the, the many wonderful qualities of it for us is that it is a very much a cross-functional uh, event. We bring to pe people together from all different elements uh, of our athletic department. But a few folks uh, I do want to recognize, Marty Kaufman, Kent Brown, Lisa Rusin, and our entire Varsity I group, Kevin Mitchell. Uh, Cassie Arner and Dale Miles, whose team leads all the video work you'll see today, uh, and so many others. This is the culmination of months of preparation and work, and I uh, can't thank them all enough for their professionalism uh, and the tremendous skill that they bring to the table each and every day. I also want to recognize our Hall of Fame selection committee. Uh, this is our fourth class being inducted into the University of Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. And as you can imagine, uh, as a late starter into the Hall of Fame business, we have a lot of work uh, to, to go to make up on over 125 years of athletics excellence. And our Hall of Fame selection committee has taken on the tough challenge of, of sorting through all those past successes and identifying the most deserving individuals to step forward across this stage in each and every year's class. Uh, we now have 80 total members in the Hall of Fame, including this year's 15. Uh, which means we have hundreds and hundreds of more to go and uh, looking forward to honoring them in the years to come. Also, it would always be remiss if any time we have an event in this incredible building, not to say a word of thanks to our State Farm Center staff and crew. Uh, it's just a wonderful home for Illinois athletics. Obviously, it's most familiar to many of you as the home of Illinois basketball, uh, but it is a, a tremendous opportunity for us to showcase this building and utilize it in different capacities, including uh, for our induction ceremonies, which we've done now for many years, and I uh, can't say thanks to them enough. Uh, two other people I want to recognize. One is our chancellor, Dr. Robert Jones. Uh, he is not with us yet, but I believe he will be en route here from another event, and uh, I can't say enough good things about the incredible leadership that he's providing to our campus. He here in the next week or so will celebrate his uh, sixth anniversary, I'm sorry, his fifth anniversary as the chancellor of our institution. Uh, he has been a wonderful partner and ally to the athletic program. Uh, I can't say enough good things uh, about the leadership that he's providing, obviously through the midst of a global pandemic and all the things that are happening here on our University of Illinois campus are in large part attributable to his leadership. And so I can't say uh, enough how grateful I am for his partnership. Uh, speaking of partners, I want to recognize my wife, Hope, uh, who's sitting down here in the front row. As uh, some of you who may have realized if you have young children, raising kids during the middle of a global pandemic presents its own share of very special challenges. And uh, I, I hope has been just an incredible partner to me and I, I can't thank her enough uh, for her love and support and uh, for our two children. Really makes going home after uh, some nights like last night uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special, even in the face of some challenging, challenging days. And so uh, special thanks to her. Also, and, and uh, Ryan mentioned it, uh, this year we've, we've packaged together our, our Varsity I Awards and our Hall of Fame weekend. Everything deals with former letter winners. And uh, on, in an event on Thursday night, we had the chance to celebrate three incredible individuals who have left a mark on this athletic program. Uh, two of them received honorary Varsity I's. One is Dana Brenner, who is a longtime member of our administration and a role model and mentor for many people in our athletic department, including myself. Second one was Greg Heckman. Greg is an Illinois alumnus and 
now is the CEO of Bungie, which is a $45 billion a year agribusiness company based in St. Louis. Uh, if you have a chance to go through the Smith Center, you'll walk into the Heckman Great Hall uh, in recognition of some of his incredible contributions to this athletic program. Uh, and then you'll hear from our Varsity Eye uh, Achievement Award winner later on this afternoon, Mark Steinberg. Uh, Mark is someone who has become a close friend, uh, a two-time graduate of this university, a former member of our Flying Illini team, and has uh, developed himself into one of the top sports agents in all of, uh, all of, college, or all of athletics, uh, including representing one person you probably have heard of, uh, Tiger Woods. A few words about this class, the 2020 Hall of Fame induction class here at the University of Illinois. I think their accomplishments speak for themselves. You have two World Series titles. You have five National Football League titles, including two Super Bowls. You have a soccer world champion. You have four Olympic gold medals, including three, uh, I'm sorry, four Olympic medals, including three golds. You're the first athlete to ever appear on a Wheaties box. Pop culture happening here at the University of Illinois. 13 of our 14 athletes were all Americans during their time here on our campus. And the lone exception, Ray Nitschke, all he did was go on to be named the, the greatest linebacker in the first 50 years of the NFL and get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Our two coaches in the class combined to win 24 Big Ten championships and three NCAA championships. It's always hard in a position like this one. I, I got home after the game last night and, and you think about how you want to approach each event that you have in succession. Do you compartmentalize each one and act like they have nothing to do with the others or do you acknowledge some of the things that have happened in the, in the days and hours preceding or post uh, this particular event? And I decided as I was sitting there thinking about what I wanted to say today, I had some remarks prepared and I essentially said I was going to throw them out because we went through a tough game last night, hard game against Maryland, a uh, game that we had many opportunities to win. And I, I think as I got up this morning, as, as Ryan said, the sun came up, I went out on a run, which is uh, essentially my private office. It's a place where I have a chance to go and, and think, collect myself, collect my thoughts. And as I was out sweating this morning, it dawned on me that although those accomplishments speak for themselves, I think what we don't realize is that even those people who walk across stages like this one are there not so much because of what they accomplished, but because of what they overcame. Mm -hmm. And I think too often that part of the story goes untold. Understanding that we all love sports for different reasons. We love to watch accomplishment. We love to watch people do things that we've never seen done before. We love the drama of the game, which we had plenty of last night. But at the end of the day, most of us watch sports to be inspired. And when you think about what you're being inspired to do, it's not being inspired to go out and win a World Series championship. It's not being inspired to go become an Olympic gold medalist. We all recognize that those doors aren't open to every person. Those aren't inside many of us. But what we're inspired to do is to persevere. We are inspired to overcome. We're inspired to continue to get out of bed every day and put one foot in front of the next and continue to swing away at being great at whatever it is you do in your life. At the end of the day, that's what sports is about. And so I'm grateful to our class today for reminding me of that. That it's not about the accomplishments, it's about the struggle. It's about the strength that comes from the adversity. And every person who will stand up here today and those who aren't able to be with us today has the chance to stand there and talk about what they went through to stand at this podium. Because it is not the result of a golden road. Every person who has done anything meaningful in their life has done it as a result of overcoming significant adversity. And these people are tremendous examples of what's possible when you never give up, when you continue 
to do the hard work in the face of the, the greatest obstacles. That's what we're doing as an athletic program, and that's what these Hall of Famers have proven to us can be successful. And so as I talk to our student athletes and we talk about the direction and, and the trajectory of Illinois athletics, we point to people like them. Do it like they did. It's no different than what we tell them when we talk about their academics. We don't expect every student athlete to be a 4.0. We expect them to get out of bed every day and apply themselves. We expect them to stand up and push through. That's what these guys and gals have done. They've shown us how to push through. And we may not all be able to go out and win a medal. And we may not all be able to go out and win a title. We can all go out every day and give everything we have and never be deterred by the obstacles that are put in front of us. Because those obstacles, those are the things that will define us. Not the successes, but the failures. And our willingness to continue to step back into the fray, back into the competitive arena, to grow and push each other to that ultimate success. And the people you will hear from today have lived that every day of their lives. They're an inspiration to me, and I hope they will be an inspiration to all of you. So thank you so much for being here. Congratulations to our class. It has been an absolute privilege to get to know them. This is a special class for me. A lot of these folks are about my vintage, uh, and we've, we've known each other for a long time. And so for me to now see them represented in this elite company is a very personal and special day for me. So congratulations to everyone for being here. We look forward to a great afternoon, and uh, I'll end as Ryan started. ILL. Thank you, everybody. Josh, thank you so much. Such excellent words and putting it in perspective just how big of an accomplishment it is to be a Hall of Famer in anything, but particularly with the rich history of Illinois athletics. A lot of orange and blue blood, sweat, and tears have been shed to become members of this exclusive club. So you should be very honored and very proud. I know the family and friends who are here with you today supporting you, who help you push you, push you to this uh, tremendous achievement, certainly sharing this honor. Uh, before we get going with meeting our honorees, know that you're gonna have a chance to hear from all of our Hall of Famers who are present with us today here at the State Farm Center, as well as recognizing remaining members of this incredible class of 2020 who were unable to make it today, unfortunately, uh, due to the ongoing circumstances in our world today as we adjust to this new normal in this pandemic world. Unfortunately, a few of our honorees were unable or decided not to travel here back to campus. And uh, we've done our best, though, to make sure they're a part of today's ceremony. And through the magic of videotape, and you know, you pull out a cell phone, we could, here's the good news, we could have done this whole thing on Zoom, right? No, we didn't want to do Zoom. They're like, no, unmute, unmute, we're not getting that. So <laughs> we're, we're not on Zoom today, this is, we're, we're live. But we'll still be able to connect with those Hall of Famers who uh, were not able to attend today through videotape, and of course, we'll also honor those Hall of Famers who are unfortunately no longer with us, but have family or representatives who could accept this honor on their behalf. Each member of this Hall of Fame class will receive a spectacular bronze statue sculpted by famed U of I graduate George Lundeen. How many people have seen the Red Grange statue outside Memorial Stadium? or the Dick Buckus statue outside the Smith Family Football Performance Center. Amazing, right? Well, George Lundin uh, sculpted those and each of these individual things. And trust me, you can't get these on Amazon. You can't get them on eBay. This is, when, when, when you put this up in your home in your trophy case, it will stand out because it is truly a handmade individual piece of art. Well, without further ado, let's get today's festivities underway. And begin to meet our class of 2020 for the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. Our first honoree is one of the most distinguished players ever for the Fighting Illini and is still the all-time leading scorer in Illinois basketball history. 
I didn't say men's basketball or women's basketball. Ill Sorry, Dion. Illinois basketball history, period. Please direct your attention to the video screen as we welcome to the stage Jenna Smith. Jenna Smith, basketball. Jenna Smith finished her Fighting Illini career and continues to stand as the program's all-time leader in scoring with 2,160 points and rebounds with more than 1,200 boards. She was a three-time first-team All-Big Ten honoree from 2008 to 2010 while earning All-America recognition as a senior. Smith holds several other Illinois scoring records, including career double-doubles with 53 and the most double-doubles in a season with 21. Yeah, she got game. Ladies and gentlemen, our first Hall of Famer this afternoon, please welcome to the stage, Jenna Smith. that I'm a Hall of Famer, but um, shout out to Dion. I had to beat your record, you know, sorry, no offense. But um, I wanna thank my family and my friends that came and supported me through my four years. I mean, it's home, I love it. I bleed orange and blue. I love that my ex at Minnesota is still on the roster here, so it's awesome. And I just wanna thank everybody for supporting us. And this is the best school, and I wouldn't be a professional athlete. I wouldn't be as great as a human without this university, my parents, and everything. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming. And I love. There we go. Congratulations to Jenna Smith. Before we introduce our next Hall of Famer, Josh mentioned he'd be arriving. I think I saw Chancellor Robert Jones walk in. Chancellor Jones, say hello to our wonderful leader here on campus. Up next, our next Hall of Fame inductee is recognized as the best fencer in program history and a highly successful coach for Illinois after fi he finished competing. Let's meet Art Schenken. Art Schenken, fencing. Art Schenken was the greatest fencer in fighting Illini history. He was a three-time All-American after tying for fifth nationally in the Sabre as a sophomore finishing third in foil as a junior, and swept to the NCAA Sabre title as a senior, becoming the first intercollegiate fencer to win a national championship with an undefeated record. As the Illini head fencing coach from 1973 to 1993, Jenkins' teams amassed a dual meet record of 391 wins and just 51 losses and led Illinois to seven Big Ten championships and 10 top 20 finishes at the NCAA championships. Art passed away in 2014, but we were able to get a few thoughts from his daughter, Christine Clindworth, about his time here at the University of Illinois. It, it is a great honor to have received this award on behalf of my father. I just wish that he were here, of course, to accept it in person. It's thrilling that dad is going to be in the Athletics Hall of Fame because it uh, definitely puts fencing on the map, as you would say. And, you know, it is such an honor to be recognized and for dad to kind of, you know, in a lesser known sport to be included among the more well-known sports and given the legacy of so many athletes here it's it's a true honor for him to be recognized for his contributions he would be very very happy to know that fencing was put on the map and that not only his efforts and successes were being rewarded but that the whole fencing legacy was in somehow documented in a very prestigious and honorable position. Uh, my dad being part of the Hall of Fame will mean that fencing, as well as him, will always be remembered. 
Christine, thank you for those words. Right now, we want to welcome her to the stage, along with Art's son, Ron Shankin, who are accepting this Hall of Fame award on his behalf. Thank you so much. Illinois wrestling has long had a storied tradition, and this next Hall of Fame inductee fits right into that top group of grapplers who helped turn the program into a national powerhouse at the turn of the 21st century. Let's find out more about the outstanding career of Adam Tirapelli. Adam Tirapelli, wrestling. Adam Tirapelli helped Illinois finish fifth at the 2001 NCAA Wrestling Championships by taking the individual title at 149 pounds, which was Illinois' best placing nationally since 1946. He earned All-America honors three times and was the 2000 Big Ten champion at 149 pounds while qualifying for the NCAA Championships all four years as an Illini finishing second in 2000 and third in 1999, in addition to his 2001 title. One of the great leaders for the Illini, Tirapelli was a three-time team captain and two-time most valuable wrestler. Illini Nation, please join me in welcoming back Hall of Famer Adam Tirapelli. Well, I, I'm obviously honored to be, a, to be a Hall of Fame member. As I was coming back here, I realized I haven't been on this campus in 20 years in any, any meaningful capacity. And walking around, looking at how much it's changed has, has been incredible. But as I spent time here the last several days, football game, the tailgates, all the people, the community, the athletic staff, I realized how much it really hasn't changed. The surface is different, but the core is the same. And it kind of reminds me of, of where I'm at. Uh, 20 years ago, I think the only thing that, that's remained from, from those pictures up there is my height and my tan. And uh, those weren't things that I was very proud of. I guess I'm, I'm still training, just like I was back then. But really, I was just hoping to, to get up on the stage and have people not look up here and go, oh my gosh, what happened to Terrapelli over the last 20 years? So while I'm not winning NCAA titles, hopefully I had a little bit of success there. Listen, being a college athlete is, is special. Being a Division I college athlete, obviously, is the next level. Being at a place like, like Illinois in the Big Ten um, is obviously an incredible level. And then to have elite Division I success and end up in the Hall of Fame is something that's beyond what I ever dreamed about. Um, in honesty, I guess being Anything beyond the age of 30 is probably beyond what I ever dreamed about as a kid, but that's, we can all, probably all relate to that. Uh, we've got the whole wrestling team here, um, and, and I appreciate their support. Um, every year I'm more and more impressed with the guys and gals who do it at this level. I think you take it for granted and you don't realize until you're gone how special you are, and it'll go by in the blink of an eye. I'm 43 now. I've almost spent more years out of college than when I graduated, and I never thought that would happen. So it's important to make the most of your window. For the Hall of Fame athletes, for all the, all the athletes, though we, we look different, we come from different backgrounds, we play, from, we play different sports, um, I, I think like the university, there's a lot of similarities at our core. I've always not only been uh, appreciated greatness, but I've been a student of what it takes to be great at anything, whether it's sports, my sport, another sport, um, instruments, anything that makes you an elite performer. And I think we have a lot of things in common. There are more, there are more 
things in common, similarities, and differences. I think all the people up here have driven personalities with defined goals and unwavering commitment. I watch guys with, with more talent than myself not only not have success, but not even finish athletic careers. Your talent is your admission ticket, and it's everything you do after that that determines where you finish in this, in this great race. I was borderline OCD, and I think all of us probably a little bit, uh, I think all of us probably were a little bit, but that's what separates you from a slew of talented people, that, that healthy obsession. I think all of us have perseverance, as, as Josh mentioned earlier, that all of us wanted to give up at one time. Believe it or not, the road wasn't easy. Um, overcoming adversity many times is what makes a successful career. I, I use a quote that I think is apt, and I use it in my own coaching today, that most people overestimate what they can do in a month or a year and drastically underestimate what they can do over a career. Just keep coming back daily is what results in great success. Uh, there are many reasons athletes don't have success at this level, and most have to do with being able to stay the course. The last thing is I think all of these, all of these athletes that I'm a, I'm a part of, past and present, are fully committed. You never be afraid of failure. Fear, fear paralyzes a lot of us from really committing to anything. It's the fear of fe the feeling you'll get if you don't have success, and that's what prevents you from doing it. But fully committed means different things to everybody. Now, I'll tell you what fully committed means to me, and this is what I share with my athletes now, and I use the business fable of the chicken and the pig. So in a ham and egg breakfast, there are two animals required to make the meal, the chicken and the pig. And on the surface, they seem equal, 50-50, both are required. But while the chicken is, is required and involved in the process, only the pig is fully committed. All the athletes here were fully committed. In my time here, it's not the destination, but the journey. I remember, the things I remember the most are not that winning moment or, or that great match. It was all the experiences I had along the way um, and, and what got me to this point. I remember taking an aerodyne bike and doing sprints while I was student teaching because I thought I wanted to be the teacher at the time at lunchtime over at Champaign Central. And I think all the teachers thought I was crazy, but that was part of, of being successful, being fully committed. I remember splitting my open in practice and crying like a baby in the hallway. Yes, the, the wrestlers cry here and there too. Um, but it wasn't because I was hurt and it wasn't because uh, of anything else. It was, it was the fact that I was gonna miss training and I was so committed to what I was doing. I remember speaking to our student reporter after losing the finals as a junior and saying I had 365 more days and I was gonna be ready the next time and I'm in it. Every single day was about getting to the next step, that process. I remember bus rides, practices, parties, everything that makes up the journey. So I do wanna thank uh, a few people. I wanna thank uh, everyone in Illinois. Um, Cassie Arner, who, are, who is an athletic director now, was our SID at the time. Our training staff, John Quinn and Scott Frisbee. Ron Gunther was our former AD. He was incredibly uh, supportive of wrestling. He helped get me into grad school and onto, onto owning my own business today. Professors Dave Williams and Hank Wilkin Wilkinson, former professors here. Hank probably saved my athletic career by talking me out of being so obsessed with getting into grad school and finishing, my, finishing what I had started out to do as a wrestler and allowed me to, to win as a senior. Um, my teammates, of course. Wrestling is truly a team sport. Uh, you need to fight daily in wrestling, and unfortunately, it's your buddies. So we fight at practice and, and had out of practice, but we never took it back home, and they're still some of my best friends to this day. Uh, my coaches, Mark Johnson and Jim Heffernan. Listen, there's a lot of great athletic programs, and there's a lot of great universities. I came here because it seemed like a family, people that would take care of you. And, and I can say to this day I was right, that they're people, both of those guys, they put person above athlete. And while athlete's important and they get you where you need to be, they always felt like fathers. I've seen both of them since I've been here and they mean a ton to me and we're still great friends to this day. I can never repay them for all they gave to me and I hope they know how much I appreciate all their support. My wife, she played college soccer here. She was part of the first college soccer team and we were friends for a few years before we started dating. Us wrestlers aren't the smartest, but I did finally realize that I was closer to her than the girls I was dating, so that was better, better, better that I realized that at that point and not later. That was 21 years ago, and three kids, and she still challenges me, she laughs with me, mostly at me, and she's still my best friend. If I didn't have any athletic success on campus, just meeting, here, meeting her was worth the journey from California. 
My family's here. Uh, my dad, Steve, got me into wrestling, coached me through high school. He was wise enough to know when to turn me over to capable people. I'm glad that he wanted more for me and, and his kids than he had for himself, and he, he gave us opportunities. My mom's here. You won't find a mentally tougher, five foot, 95 pound woman probably in the country. Uh, she kept us on track both ath athletically and academically. Uh, my uncle who helped coach us, my brothers who were pretty damn good wrestlers here in their own right, and if not for a few injuries, they might have beat me to the stage, Alex and Troy, and my sister who no one re ever remembers, but she was a pretty good athlete herself, Brooke. My grandparents met, made every NCAA tournament. They're no longer with us, but they were a big, big supporters of the program. And my in-laws who took me in on more than one occasion uh, for holidays because again, I was fully committed to what I was doing so I didn't make it home very often. Listen, Illinois was my home. Um, it was my home away from home and I fell in love with this place. They say time flies when you're having fun and it seems like you arrive on campus one day and the next day you wake up and you're gone. I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I can re recall my time here with photographic precision. I want to thank everyone in Illinois, both past and present, for this honor and all the support I've received to make this honor possible. I have eternal gratitude for all my experiences here and will do my best to pay it forward, both now and in the future, to all Illini. I'm grateful and I'm humbled for all this university has given me and I will be forever in the debt of the orange and blue. Thank you and go Illini. Adam, congratulations. Our next Hall of Fame honoree has been recognized as one of the world's most in influential ambassadors of the sport of basketball. Oh, I thought we had a casualty there. Okay. Uh, over the last seven decades. You can't lose you, Josh. We need you. All right. Uh, after shining in the 1960s, he went on to become a national hero in Israel. Here's a little more about our next Hall of Famer, Tal Brody. Tal Brody, basketball. Tal Brody has earned international acclaim as Israel's Mr. Basketball and International Goodwill Ambassador, using basketball to help develop relationships with many nations over the decades. He was named first team All-American and All-Big Ten in 1965 and was the 12th overall pick in the 1965 NBA draft. However, Tal chose to play professionally in Israel helping the national team to the 1977 FIBA European Champions Cup title. He was the 1967 Israeli Sportsman of the Year and is a member of the Israeli Basketball Hall of Fame. In 1979, Tal became the first sportsman to be awarded the Israel Prize, Israel's highest civilian honor. A true global basketball icon. Unfortunately, Tal Brody could not travel from overseas and be with us today for today's induction ceremony, but he remains a dedicated member of the Fighting Illini family and recently sent us this video of his acceptance speech from Israel. Let's take a listen. Hello, Fighting Illini friends and family. Uh, since uh, receiving the exciting news from uh, Josh Whitman, about a year and so ago, uh, during the outbreak of the coronavirus, uh, knowing that it's, this September is going to be the ceremony, I didn't think that it's not going to be possible for me to attend for more than several reasons that we have uh, the Jewish holidays, that we have new corona restrictions now because of the upsurge, and that my grandson's having his uh, bar mitzvah. But I do thank the University of Illinois uh, Athletics Association for nominating me to be inducted to the Sports Hall of Fame, the Athletics Hall of Fame. And I do want to thank my good friends, Scott Gendel, a fraternity brother in CBT, University of Illinois, and Dion Thomas, the one and only great center, the greatest at the University of Illinois and also came to Israel and we won two European basketball championships with Dion under the basket doing everything for the team. Uh, I never uh, uh, forgot my education at the University of Illinois, coming out of Trenton Central High School, uh, playing for the University of Illinois. We weren't allowed to play as a freshman, but uh, starting at my uh, sophomore year, 
taking Jerry Colangelo's place that graduated, uh, my education as a basketball player, my education at the University of Illinois has been with me for, wow, well, some 50 some years since graduating. Uh, it's, it has led everything which I have done a lot in my life. It's 6,000 miles away, but it's never, uh, University of Illinois has never been forgotten. Thank you very much, everybody, for bestowing this great honor upon me. Thank you. As you heard Tal mention, his dear friend Dion Thomas, who also played in Israel. Dion is here with us, who's now a fellow Hall of Famer, to accept Tal's Hall of Fame award on his behalf. Dion. Like basketball and so many other sports, Illinois gymnastics has a long and storied history of success on the national stage. Our newest Hall of Famer certainly added to this tradition. Let's hear more about the collegiate and international success of fighting Illini gymnast Don Tanri. Don Tonry, gymnastics. Don Tonry was a member of the 1960 U.S. Olympic team, competing in eight events. He was the NCAA champion in all around in 1956 and was the floor exercise champion in 1959. Tonry was a nine-time All-American with three in the parallel bars all around and high bar in 1956 and six in 1959 in the all around, floor exercise, side horse, high bar, parallel bars, and still rings. Tonry was the 1956 Big Ten All-Around Champion and 1959 Floor Exercise Champion. During his competitive career, Tonry won seven AAU titles and competed for the U.S. at three World Championships in 1958, 1962, and 1966. Tonry became the gymnastics coach at Yale in 1962 and stayed there for 43 years. He was inducted into the U.S. Gymnastics Hall of Fame in 1980. Unfortunately, Don passed away in 2013, and his wife, Barb, who herself was the head coach of Yale's women's gymnastics team for nearly 50 years, passed away this past July at the age of 84. We will accept this award on their behalf and plan to connect with the family in the near future. Up next, we recognize one of the most successful soccer players in finding Illini history. After dominating in the collegiate ranks, she's still playing professionally right now for the Chicago Red Stars. Let's meet Vanessa DiBernardo. Vanessa DiBernardo, soccer. Vanessa DiBernardo is one of Illinois' most heralded soccer players, earning second team All-America and first team All-Big Ten recognition three times. She represented the U.S. at the under 20 and under 23 level, helping the U.S. to the 2012 FIFA U-20 Women's World Cup Championship. Vanessa is third at career points at Illinois after scoring 43 goals and contributing 22 assists. Vanessa was the fourth overall pick in the 2014 National Women's Soccer League College Draft by the Chicago Red Stars, where she continues to play. Vanessa truly wanted to be here with us this afternoon and was planning on it, but unfortunately she's recovering from a recent injury and couldn't travel down here to campus from Chicago. She was able to, ref uh, to record a few comments, though, and let's take a listen to those right now. Hi, everyone. Vanessa DiBernardo here. I unfortunately can't make it there today due to being in season with the Chicago Red Stars, but I wanted to say a few words. First off, congratulations to all the inductees of the Hall of Fame Class of 2020. I'm truly honored to be recognized with all the amazing athletes in this class. Seeing the careers you had at Illinois is remarkable, and I'm grateful to be alongside of you. I want to say a special thank you to my coaches, Janet Rayfield and Jeff Freeman. You both challenged me to be a better athlete, but more importantly, a better person. Honesty, integrity, and excellence. If you ask any Illinois soccer player, they'll be able to say these three words, and they have stuck with me throughout my career. I also want to say thank you to my teammates. Without my teammates, I wouldn't be here today. They challenged me, supported me, through my ups and downs, and still to this day are doing the same. And lastly, thank you to my parents. They've shaped me to be the person that I am. 
My dad pushes me to always be better and to always want more, and my mom is there to support me no matter what. The balance of the two has motivated me to keep going. So thank you. I am truly honored to be in this Hall of Fame class with these amazing athletes and people, and honored to be alongside the other great athletes who came before. As always, go Illini. Vanessa D. Bonarno representing there with the eye on her chest. Her college coach, as she mentioned, Janet Rayfield, the head Illinois soccer coach, is here to accept the award on Vanessa's behalf. Coach Rayfield. Our next Hall of Fame honoree was a dominant defensive player for the Fighting Illini football squad in the late 80s into the early 90s. One of the best to ever put on the orange and blue. Let's meet number 95, Mo Gardner. Mo Gardner, football. Morris Mo Gardner is arguably the best defensive tackle in Fighting Illini history. He was a two-time consensus All-American and four-time All-Big Ten selection. Mo helped Illinois to three consecutive bowl games and a share of the 1990 Big Ten Championship. He was the 1990 Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year while finishing as a finalist for the 1990 Lombardi Award and the 1989 Outland Trophy while being named to the Illinois All-Century Team in 1990 during his senior season. Mo Gardner was truly one of the best to ever do it here in Champaign-Urbana. Unfortunately, my old classmate couldn't make it back down to campus this weekend, but we were able to connect with Mo recently, and he provided us with this video of his comments about being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm not be able to be there uh, in Champaign, um, but I, I truly want to take the moment to uh, really acknowledge um, our designer um, at the University of um, given uh, to this class of uh, Hall of Fame inductees, and I'm truly privileged to be part um, of this class and it's amazing group of uh, athletes and, and students at the time. Um, I'd like to uh, just kind of reflect a little bit on the uh, coaches, uh, Coach Mike White and uh, Coach John McEvick, who were the head coaches when I was there at the time and brought me to university, kind of guided my career as an athlete and student um, there. Uh, Coach Lou Tapper, our uh, defense coordinator, who was a really important influence on my development as an athlete. Uh, Bill Kolar, who was my defensive line coach. Um, those are the people that shaped my um, experience, you know, on the football field, but also my colleagues um, and my fellow athletes who, without their contributions and their uh, commitment to uh, putting together a great team, um, I wouldn't be in this position uh, to uh, be acknowledged like this. It's really important. Um, there were several people that, you know, when you think about that automatically, Red Grain, Dick Buckets, Ray Mitz, and you hear those names and those kind of names, you think about the Hall of Fame and it kind of gives you a humbling perspective to, to think that on that list somewhere you show up. And so it really is a, a, a honor uh, to uh, have this opportunity to uh, be acknowledged like this. And I think it's more of a reflection of that class of uh, young men that I was part of um, as a, a football team. And it's also a reflection of the university and kind of what it instilled in me um, as I developed as a young man, uh, you know, acknowledging my family as well. Um, my mother and my father you know, always instilled in me a, a really strong work ethic to get me uh, to the University of Illinois. And my wife, who, um, you know, for 30 years, she's a graduate of the University of Illinois. We had our uh, oldest daughter uh, there, you know, on campus for senior year. And so um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank um, everyone of uh, the athletic department, the uh, coaching staff, and everybody involved in this um, honor to um, um, acknowledge, you know, uh, my contribution to this long legacy that exists in uh, um, Illini athletics. Once again, congratulations to Mo Gardner. We certainly look forward to having him back here on campus as soon as possible to honor and recognize him in front of all of our proud Fighting Illini football fans. Uh, Josh mentioned on Thursday night, the Varsity Eye Association hosted its annual awards reception. I think they're still recovering from that from what I, from what I understand. It was a pretty raucous night. Mark Steinberg, a former men's basketball student athlete, and co-founder, he has his own cheering section here, co-founder and partner of Excel Sports Management received the Achievement Award. That is the highest honor bestowed upon a member of the Varsity I family for postgraduate achievement. 
Greg Heckman, CEO of Bungie, and Dana Brenner, a longtime DIA administrator, received honorary varsity letters for their significant contributions to Illinois athletics. Joining us today is Achievement Award winner, Mark Steinberg. Please help in recognizing Mark as he comes to the stage to make a few remarks. I'm not going to tell any stories, even though I could. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Steinberg. Humbling. Uh, Hall of Fame is never anything that's going to be part of my career, but I want to congratulate all of the inductees. I got a chance to spend some time with a few. Kevin Hardy's somebody I've respected and, and looked at, and the way he played football and just conducted himself. And Jenna, thank you for not wearing heels today. Um, that was very kind of you. Uh, got to spend some time with her yesterday at basketball practice. Um, so, but everybody, uh, congratulations. Uh, it really is humbling and I just want to acknowledge Greg and Dana. They're not here today, but they were basically standing right here with me receiving uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, as a walk-on here, well, first of all, as a walk-on here, this is probably, Ryan can attest to it, the most time I've ever spent on this floor. Uh, so, uh, but being a walk-on here, uh, it taught me a lot about my life. It taught me about grit, determination, uh, stick to just, you know, things that have then translated into my life, my career, and uh, it's, uh, it's stuck with me. And, uh, and, and I'll never forget those times uh, forever. Uh, this place is very special to me. I was, you know, I got all these notes and, you know, screw that. So um, I was on the field last night and a couple minutes before the game, they play on the Jumbotron, um, Mr. Butkus, and he is talking about home. And so that's kind of where I feel right now is home. Um, grew up in Peoria, Illinois, uh, so this is home. And so uh, I, there's, I got two kids here that go to school here, um, sitting at the table. I have a third at home who obviously is gonna go to school here. And, uh, and, and this is home. And I get off the airplane and I just feel like I'm home. And I'm home because of the people. And it's people and places in life that make you feel good. And this really is home for me. Uh, it doesn't matter where I live, where I go, what I do. Um, I wanna give back to this place. Um, I think Jenna and others have kind of said they bleed orange and blue. I will forever, um, and this just is home. Um, I want to recognize Josh. I think you know, first athletic director who's um, you know put this Hall of Fame in motion, uh, and I think he deserves a hell of a lot of credit, not just for that, but for everything that he's doing for this university. Yeah, he's become a friend. His family's become friends, but um, yeah, I want to, I think we should all thank him uh, for that. <laughs> you know, I said I, I wouldn't, uh, uh, well, I, I don't know, well, I'm quite, not quite sure why I'm here regardless, but I wouldn't be here if I wasn't a walk-on and then done some stuff in my career, uh, but being a walk-on was, was amazing. Uh, so I just, the players, everybody, I saw Kenny Battle last night, Deion Thomas, who I think had to scoot out, but great friend. Like, everybody has been phenomenal. So I just, in closing, just want to say a couple things. Uh, all the coaches were great too, but we would all be um, remiss if we didn't think about Coach Henson uh, and Coach Collins who have passed, and so we're all thinking about them. Uh, I want to 
closing, just thank my family, uh, Tara, my wife, who has uh, just been the rock of my life, our family, our family's family, other people's families, uh, and she's just, uh, she's amazing. I got three incredible kids, as I said, two that go to school here, uh, and another that will, as I said, and um, I know I'm about, well, I know I'm supposed to say I-L-L-I-N-I. You guys know, I just said I bleed orange and blue, but we're gonna change that up right now. My daughter, who's a junior here, it is her 21st birthday. So I assume Cam's is gonna have a very good night tonight. Um, so on three, I would just like everybody not to sing, but just say happy birthday, Jess. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jess. All right, and lastly, promised I wouldn't say her, swear, F-U-C-K, Michigan. <laughs> now you see why he's a great agent. He knew how to close the deal, didn't he? Mark Steinberg, or Steiny as we call him, not bad for a former walk-on to the manager. I'll tell you a quick Steiny story. Uh, I was at a golf tournament, and I see him across the way, and I run up, and there was a guy standing next to him. I said, excuse me, what's your name? Oh, Tiger. So, excuse me. Steiny, what's up, man? That's the man right there. He's a baller. So give it up for Mark Steinberg. Congratulations. We continue with the induction of our remaining 2020 class members. The next honoree contributed greatly to the history of Illinois track and field. Leo Johnson consistently guided the orange and blue to championships over a coaching career that spanned four different decades. Let's find out more now about the success of Leo Johnson. Leo Johnson, men's track and field and football. Leo Johnson served as the head track and field coach at Illinois from 1938 to 1965 winning three NCAA team championships and 17 Big Ten Conference championships, 10 outdoors and seven indoors. His teams also twice finished as runners-up at the NCAA meets. Johnson is a member of the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Johnson's athletes captured 27 individual NCAA titles and 158 conference firsts during his 28 years at Illinois. In addition, Johnson worked on the Illini football staff for 16 seasons and was known as an outstanding scout for Bob Zucke and Ray Elliott. Leo passed away in 1982, but we weren't able to catch up with Joe Corley, a former NCAA champion and at Illinois who ran and uh, participated under Coach Johnson, who was kind enough to give us some of his insight on what it was like to train under the tutelage of Leo Johnson. I would say this about Leo Johnson. He was one of the best coaches I ever had. And he was a friend. He was honest. He was trusting. He was smart. He was just a good guy, and he was a good coach. And I knew if I had something I was worried about and this type of thing, I knew I could go to him and talk with him. and. He'd give me some advice and this type of thing. Well, he was he was a, a mentor for us guys, and uh, and I just I just really thought he knew what he was talking about. He didn't he didn't put you down or anything, and uh, so he he was a guy that you could, you would really uh, uh, want as a friend. I think he would say thank you very much you know, and uh, and say, I know there's a lot of people that deserve this, and I, I'm glad that, that uh, you see fit for me to enter that. At this time, please welcome to the stage Philip Johnson. He's the grandson of Leo Johnson, who is accepting this Hall of Fame award on his behalf.
We're going to keep it moving, staying on the theme of track and field success while recognizing our next honoree. She is the most decorated women's thrower in Illinois history. Let's take a look at some of the accomplishments of Gia Lewis Smallwood. Gia Lewis Smallwood, track and field. Gia Lewis Smallwood is the most accomplished field event athlete in Fighting Illini women's track and field history. She competed at the 2012 Summer Olympics in the discus and until last year held the American record in that event for six years with a toss of 226 feet 11 inches in 2014. Lewis Smallwood is a four-time U.S. discus champion while also finishing second twice. She holds the Illinois records for the 20-pound weight throw and discus and finished fifth in the discus at the 2001 NCAA Outdoor Championships to earn All-America status. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next Hall of Famer, Gia Lewis Smallwood. tremendous honor. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying um, I'm a townie. I am born and raised in Champaign-Urbana. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've lived here, gosh, I think I moved two years ago, so 40 years and 42. And so I'm going to take just a minute. I've tried to write the speech several times, and I keep coming back to the deep love I have for my hometown. And um, I think I'm going to share that with you today. So if you wouldn't mind for indulging me for a few minutes, um, that's what I'm going to share. Um, I would like to first thank Josh and the selection committee for this award. I also would like to thank Ron Gunther, our former AD, who was phenomenal, uh, the late Terry Cole, and the late Dr. Carol Cars, um, who were also equally as phenomenal. But being born in Champaign-Urbana, I've got to say, it's one of the greatest honors I have ever received. And so for some, this university is a place that will change their life, maybe over the next four to 12 years, maybe more than that. But for me, this place is my home. It's my birth. It's where all, like all, of my significant first took place. Um, it's weird. When I first hear people's impressions about Champaign-Urbana, the first thing they usually say is they usually mention something about the cornfields, right? And it's the first time they've seen that many cornfields together. But when I look at it, I see the most, we have the most fertile land in the world that's beneath our feet here. The things that we can grow on this soil is phenomenal. If you're not taken in by the cornfields, you may be taken in by Memorial Stadium or the quad, right? First time you lay out on the quad and realize that you're free from your parents. Um, <laughs> but for me, when I look at the quad, I see all of the grounds crew, the maintenance crew, the electricians, the plumbers, the contractors who create an environment so incredible that it you literally feel transformed just by their work. You know, in Champaign, we get so many things profoundly right. And you hear that today through the speeches. But I think what makes our community extraordinary is what we do when we don't get things right. We have had, we're human. We, like all people on the planet, have had periods of time where we have actually colluded with oppression rather than fighting against it. Um, everybody's done it. And what sham the, the response Champagne gives, though, is taking me a long time to kind of put it together. And what we do is what I call, no idea what it's really called, but I call a process called course correction. Course correction is like this super human response to acknowledge when a previous action does not uplift an entire group of people. It creates extraordinary space
for everybody to one, acknowledge the group that's not uplifted, and two, for people to have their full range of emotions around the situation at large. On the outside, it looks like straight up chaos. Looks a little weird, looks a little chaotic. There's times where you feel like you wanna flee, go to a different community, right? But we understand that if we want to truly heal the world, if we wanna truly move everything forward, we have to give people space to heal. And so I think the feeling of family that we create is the fact that when you step on this campus and when you step on the soil, you too have that space to heal anything that you're going through, to find yourself, to learn, to grow, to be, to nurture. So that for me is the extraordinary magic that is Champaign-Urbana. So with that being said, I would like to say a few things. Um, I would actually like to give extraordinary credence to our uh, professors here on campus. Um, I feel like when you're in school, you're a little like, hmm, I don't know how this is gonna go with you. But uh, looking back later and being from here, uh, and living here almost my entire life, professors give you the space to learn, to challenge you. They teach you how to challenge each other in a meaningful way that moves things forward. Um, we are middle America. That's the beauty of it. Can you believe this? We are middle America. Uh, we have the most fertile soil in the world at our feet. We are surrounded by cornfields. We have like a legit occasional stench from the South Farms, from the cows, on a daily basis. And we are magnificent. We are absolutely magnificent. And I am so incredibly proud to have lived here and to be born here and to grow here. I am proud of what we do. I am proud of how well we move humanity forward. Always, we always are moving humanity forward. So for me, this honor is one of the greatest honors. It is the greatest honor I will ever receive because it's with my people in my community, and I am so grateful and so thankful that of all the places in the world, this place is my home. I would like to thank, uh, ooh, I need to get that paper because we, we can't be forgetting folks. That's not a good, it's not a good look. Um, <laughs> so I would like to thank um, my parents, William and Delilah Lewis, for raising me in a very, oh gosh, they were very thoughtful about how they raised me. They researched, they, they were thoughtful, and I deeply appreciate everything they've done, with me, done for me. Um, just the way that they had me interact with the world and how they thought about me was just extraordinary. I'd like to thank my brother, Sonny Lewis, um, who... I, there's just no words to describe how proud I am of him right now. Um, it brings me to my knees. His courage and strength is just amazing. I like to thank my incredible husband, Tim. Okay, so when I was practicing this, I, he heard me, and I would not tell him my thank you because the first, when we were first married, everybody kept saying, first year of marriage is really hard. So every day, either before we go to bed or I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd be like, oh my gosh. Are you okay? Are we okay? Is everything okay? And he was like, what? Yeah, we're fine. So I did this for like 40 nights. And finally he goes, oh my God, stop. I will let you know when the wheels are falling off this bus. Like, we're okay. Um, and so Tim is my strength coach. He has been an extraordinary part of my career. He is my best friend and he's really amazing. So I just wanted to, to thank him. Um, I also would like to thank um, my coach, Michael Turk. Um, coach Turk is the head U of I track and field coach. 
Um, he took me on as a professional athlete when I was 29, and man, was I terrible. Woo, those were some rough times. You talk about course correction, we did our own version of course correction to get me to the thing that you just saw today. Um, and so I am deeply grateful for Coach Turk, um, what he does, what he stands for, and how he runs his program are just top notch. I'd like to thank our previous coaches, Gary Winkler, used to be the head women's track and field coach, John Bauman and Michelle Byrne. And I'd like to thank my uh, stepson, Caleb, his awesome wife, who I love, Kara. And I have a grandbaby, y'all. Get to peep that out. She is gorgeous. So I'd like to thank her. And um, I'd also like to finally conclude by thanking the following families. Uh, the Smallwood family, the Stedman, the Stedman family, the Allen family, the Hall family, the Lewis family, the Malstead family, the Height family, the Moore family, the Meve family, my Holiday Park community, ooh, ooh, champagne, um, Greg Walters, Darren T, and then our maintenance crew and equipment people, Rick Raven, Becky Corbley, Kent Nelson, the late Terry Decker, Ade Oshinovo Schneider, and Tracy Bereither. Thank you very, 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 very much. Gia Lewis Smallwood, not only a hometown hero, but now a Hall of Famer. Now, many of you may not have heard of our next recipient, but Garland Jake Stahl was one of the premier athletes on campus after the turn of the century, and he went on to great success in the major leagues. Let's hear more now about Jake Stahl. Jake Stahl, football and baseball. Jake Stahl was a legendary multi-sport star for Illinois, earning All-America honors as a tackle on the football team in 1901, and establishing himself as a star catcher on the baseball diamond from 1901 to 1903. He helped lead the Illini to the 1903 Big Ten baseball title while batting over 400 in his last three seasons. His senior season batting average of 444 stood as the school record for 23 seasons. As a major leaguer, Stahl's eight-year career was highlighted by two World Series championships with the Boston Red Sox, 1903 as a player and 1912 as the manager, and an American League leading 10 home runs in 1910. today's ceremony, so we will expect, accept this award on their behalf. Ray Nitschke. It's a name that's synonymous with the game of football at every level. Ray was a proud Illini and one of the greatest linebackers, not only here at Illinois, but to ever play the game of football. Here's a look at the great career of the one and only Ray Nitschke. Ray Nitschke, football. Ray Nitschke was a two-way star for Illinois as a linebacker on defense and a fullback on offense, where he led the Illini in rushing with 514 yards in 1957. Nitschke followed that with a 15-year NFL Hall of Fame career with the Green Bay Packers and was named the NFL's all-time top linebacker in honor of the league's 50th anniversary and first team on the NFL's 75th anniversary team. Nitschke anchored the Packer defense for Vince Lombardi on the way to five NFL championships and victories in the first two Super Bowl games. He was selected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1978, and his number 66 was retired by the Packers in 1983. They don't make him like Ray Nitschke anymore. He put the team tough. He was going to play for the Packers, but he slide. Uh, before we present this award to Ray Nitsky, who is a huge part of the Illini football family, we want to go in the Wayback Machine and show you a video of Ray when he returned back here to campus. This was back in 1990, way back in the day at this point. And the footage is a little grainy. It's pre-HD. It's not that crystal clear video we get to see today. But it'll give you a sense of what the University of Illinois and college football meant to Ray Nitsky. Take a look at this. I grew up right here. I had my start right here in this field. We didn't have artificial turf. And I did my, I paid, paid the price, but it took. 
to be a champion. You all you guys are going to this university are champions, let me tell you. First of all. I'm proud of every one of you guys, you align. I I as a as a fan up in in Green Bay, Wisconsin, I watch every move you guys make. I'm proud of this this team, the coach, the coaching staff. I'm proud to be an align. I've been out of here for thirty some years, guys, but I could play. And the thing <laughs> that's right, man. <laughs> Buckus was a great linebacker. Who do you think his hero is? No, but I'm just telling you not. You guys, now wait a minute. Now you don't know how important these years are to you. These are really important years. They really are. I remember I looked back, I never got to the Rose Bowl. I wanted to play in the Rose Bowl, guys. I never got to play in the Rose Bowl. It's one of the few games I missed playing. And something in my in my athletic career I missed. I wanted to play in the Rose Bowl. You guys right here got an opportunity to do things that I didn't do. And I just hope and pray that you guys have enough guts, enough pride, because you don't know how important it is. I mean, you go through life, and years will go by, and people, they want to look at your Rose Bowl ring. They want to, you guys will come back for reunions like I'm back here for. Talking about the Rose Bowl. So have, focus yourself on that game, you guys. Tomorrow's is, is, is Purdue. Are you ready to beat Purdue? Are you ready to beat Purdue? Yeah! yeah. Well, I hope I hope you come out of the out of the, the locker room a little bit more inspired than you were just there when I asked you if you want to beat Purdue. Are you gonna beat Purdue? Yeah. Are you gonna go to the Rose Bowl? Yeah. Are you gonna win the Rose Bowl? Yeah. You my guy. You yeah. Josh, you ready to put the helmet back on and play? Coach Bielema should have played that video before the Maryland game last night. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was something else. Ray Nitschke, one and only Hall of Famer, would you please join me in welcoming Amy Nitschke, Ray's daughter, who will be accepting the award on behalf of the family. Congratulations. That was fantastic. Well, our next honoree helped bolster the sterling reputation of fighting Illini linebackers. There's some school out east that calls themselves Linebacker U. I, I don't know about that. I think when you look at the lineage of linebackers that have suited up for the orange and blue, and this next honoree is right in that long line. He helped the Illini football team reach two bowl games during his collegiate career and went on to win the Butkus Award, named after a guy you may have heard of who has a statue here and is also an Illini Athletics Hall of Famer. Named as the nation's best collegiate linebacker, here's Kevin Hardy. Kevin Hardy, football. Kevin Hardy was a consensus All-American and the 1995 Butkus Award winner as a senior for the Fighting Illini. He was named first team all Big Ten in both 1994 and 1995 before becoming the number two overall pick in the 1996 NFL Draft by the Jacksonville Jaguars to start a nine-year pro career. Kevin finished his Illini career ranked ninth on the all-time U of I list with 330 tackles, fourth in quarterback sacks, and fourth in tackles for loss. In 1994, he teamed with fellow Illini Athletics Hall of Fame members, Dana Howard and Simeon Rice, along with future longtime pro John Holosek, to form one of college football's greatest linebacker groups. Illini Nation, please join me in welcoming back our newest Hall of Famer, Kevin Hardy.
what a video that was. Um, you know, I had a chance to meet Ray Nitschke and, uh, and of course, Dick Buck and some of those guys. One thing I'm going to say, I don't know if you saw his fingers in that video. Them old timers, they would break fingers and they'd be pointing that way and that way. And you, you go to shake their hand, you're like, what's going on with that? It was, it was, it was kind of weird to do. It was weird to see. But uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Josh, and the uh, Hall of Fame committee for, uh, for this honor. I mean, it's truly a great honor. Um, it's been a great weekend. Uh, I came in town on Thursday and I got a chance to speak to the team. I don't know if I should have said that after that speech. I guess it didn't work, but that had been the highlight of, uh, of the weekend. Uh, yesterday, I got a chance to have lunch with the other inductees and uh, that was really special. And I want to say congratulations to you guys. Uh, really humble experience sitting in there just sharing stories because uh, I sat there and here I am thinking I did some great things and these guys did some amazing things, so congratulations to you all. Um, like Steiny, I had some notes together, and I sat there and I said, you know what, I'm just going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about my experiences. Um, I'm going to start by telling you a story of when I first came to U of I in 1991. Um, I arrived here on campus for fall check-in, and my dad my dad and I had, uh, you know, we were moving into the, the Chancellor Hotel. I don't know if you remember, you, uh, how many of you guys remember the Chancellor Hotel, real old hotel, the claps, you remember that? So we go to move in the hotel, we get off the elevator on our floor, and we, you know, and I don't know if you know, you know, the old hotels, the halls were kind of dimly lit. They don't have the you know, bright lights that you see in some of these hotels now, but real dimly lit. And it had a window at the end of the hallway, so it, you know, it shined the light through the, through the hall. So my dad and I, we get off the elevator, walking down the hall toward uh, my room, and all of a sudden the door opens up. And two of the biggest humans I've ever seen in my life come walking out. And I'm walking down the hall, and all of a sudden it starts to get darker than it already is, because they're blocking that, the light from the, uh, from the window. And as they're getting closer, it feels like it's getting darker. And I said, Jesus, you know, I'm walking. So then I start getting on my tippy toes a little bit, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, let me look a little bigger. And so as we, as we approach, I swear that hall all, all of a sudden felt like I was, I was walking down an airplane aisle. I mean, these guys, that's how much space they took up. And, uh, you know, long story short, it was, it was John Horn and, and Kim Blackman. Dad, I don't know if you remember that story, but... We went in the room, and I looked at my dad, and I said, man, I don't know about this. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you, you'll be all right. You know, you're good. I said, we got to go find a strength coach. You know, I got to get to work, you know. But that was my first experience here. And, um, you know, when I got here, I came to Illinois without any real uh, preconceived goals or expectations, um, only to get a degree. And that was because I grew up in a household with my mom, who was an educator. And when I was coming here, that's what it was. You get a degree, you play football, in that order, you know. So I got off to a pretty good start. I was able to redshirt. And that year, I got off to a good start in the classroom. And, and on the football field, I was able to, to learn. I don't know if you saw in that video, the guy that was standing there first, he had on a number 60. That guy was, uh, was Julian Brown because that video was the, the year before I got here. But that guy, Julian Brown, he played drop linebacker, the position that I went on to play. But he took me under his wing when I first got here and taught me pretty much everything it was to, to be about drop linebacker. So after that first year, I was able to have the opportunity to compete for the starting job because Julian was moving on. And so in looking at that, I was like, wow, you know, here I am a freshman, and I got a chance to compete for the starting job. So I took the bull by the horns, and I was able to, to get that starting position and uh, went on to have a pretty good freshman season. I was all, all Big Ten, I made the All Big Ten freshman team. Along with that was a kid named Simeon Rice. Now, Simeon was a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. Uh, he, too, was all Big Ten freshman, but he was also the Big Ten freshman of the year. 
And at the same time, there was two guys that were a little older than us, John Holosek and Dana Howard. And those guys had gotten uh, some Big Ten, uh, I don't know if they were first team, second team, but they had definitely gotten some recognition. And so it was at that moment that I said to myself, man, I, I really got lucky here because I'm in some pretty good company. And so all of a sudden, the light went on, and the motivation for me was like I was more motivated by the success of those guys because I knew that they were some tremendous football players. And to be honest, I didn't really see myself in the same light. And so at that moment, I changed what my mom said. I went football education. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mom. It worked out. I got a degree in four years anyway. But that's when I, I went all in on, on the football aspect. And the work ensued. And, and like I said, I really got lucky uh, being around uh, some really, really uh, gifted football players. So enter my sophomore year. Um, I think I was a uh, Big Ten honorable mention while Holosek, Dana, and Simeon were all three first team all Big Ten. So at that point, I feel like, man, I'm the weakest link here, you know? And I, I was really motivated. Like I said, I was, I was motivated by their success, but I, you know, I just didn't want to be that odd man out. And as I sit here, I see Kent Brown, you know, sitting here. And in 94, we had the, uh, the media day to open up the, the 94 season. And this is, this is a great story. I don't know if you remember this. But they go to call, you know, when we have those media days, we take pictures, they do groups, linebackers, you know, DBs, you know, all this stuff. And then they interview certain people. Of course, Simeon had a lot of people around him. I had a few, but it wasn't that packed. And all of a sudden, I hear him call for the H boys, uh, the linebackers, the H boys, you know, we need you over here. So I'm standing there, and I was like, hmm. So I walk over there, and, you know, I'm standing there, and, of course, uh, Dana and, and, and John Holosek were standing there, and they proceed to start to take these pictures, and I'm trying to get in there, and they was like, well, no, 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 the H boys are Holosek and, and Howard. And I said, well, wait a minute, my last name is Hardy. You know, that begins with an H too, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, as I said, I said, man, I, that, what kind of disrespect is that? You know, I don't know if you remember that, kid, but, it, but, but it, it was one of those moments that I said, man, I got to work harder. I got to get myself on that first team. Um, and, and, you know, that year, I ended up having a big year, and I made first team, and I had to I, I bump Holosek off of that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, I, but, but, but ever since that moment, um, you know, it, 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 it was truly a testament of the work that, like I said, those guys were doing, and I, and I just kind of followed in their footsteps. Um, you know, throughout this weekend, we've been highlighted about our individual uh, accomplishments. And a lot of people, I've done a lot of interviews, and, and people ask me, you know, what was my favorite moment? Uh, winning the Buckus Award, All-American, all these different things. And the thing about it is, is all those things were great, but uh, Adam hit it on it earlier about talking about uh, team sports. To me, football is like the ultimate team sport. And none of the things that I was able to accomplish would have been accomplished without my teammates. Um, and, that, and I'm not just talking about Dana, John, and Simeon. I'm talking all of my teammates. And so I remember when I went down to Orlando to receive the Buckus Award, when Dick called, when they called my name and I went up on the stage and I was giving that speech, you know, I, I almost felt guilty in a way because I was being honored and, you know, and I was, I was obviously humbled, but I really felt like, you know, I was there on behalf of the entire Illinois football team because, uh, it, you know, without all those guys, it wouldn't have been possible. But getting back to like this weekend, people ask me what my favorite moments are. My favorite moments here aren't any individual uh, moment of winning awards or being named All-American. My favorite moments are games like the Michigan game in 93 when we go to Ann Arbor and we beat Michigan at Michigan uh, at a time where nobody gave us a chance. Nobody thought that that was going to happen. Uh, just a tremendous feeling after that game. Uh, 94, some of you might remember, Dana goes out and uh, guarantees a victory. We we're going to have to play Ohio State. That was one of the most intense 
practice weeks that I had ever experienced in my life because we were so focused and driven to back him up on that, on that prediction. And uh, we went to Columbus. We went to Columbus that, that Saturday, and we beat, I think they were 12th or 13th in the nation, and we beat them on their field right there. And it was uh, that locker room, that locker room after that game still is my favorite moment in football. And I've you know, been fortunate enough to go on and play pro and, and played in some big games, never made it to the Super Bowl, but played in two AFC championship games. But that locker room after that game, nothing matches that euphoria. And that's something that I shared with the, uh, with the team the other night. Because what I told them was, this moment, playing college football right here at the University of Illinois, playing with the guy next to you, you'll never be able to duplicate that ever in life. And fortunately, in today's times, with all this social media and Instagram and Twitter and stuff, you guys are able to experience. I, you know, I saw the, 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 the video of the locker room after the Nebraska game. I don't know how many of you guys saw that. But those guys, that energy level was insane. And that gives you a sneak peek of what it's like because it's, it's tough to win. It's tough to win at this level. It's tough to win at the professional level. So any game you win, that, you know, it, you know, that euphoria is there. And I told those guys, you need to be excited. You got to work hard to get it done, but when you get it done, you need to be excited. And you need to understand that you'll never, never in life experience this type of euphoria outside of this locker room. So with that, you know, again, I want to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very honored and, and, and humbled to be here. There's, you know, people I want to thank that have helped me get to this point, uh, starting with my high school football coach, Mitch Marsh, um, the late Bob Gamble. He was uh, the outside linebacker coach that recruited me. Um, he passed away some years ago, but he was the, the coach that, he was my first coach, you know, when I got here. Uh, Randy Rogers was the uh, recruiting coordinator. He was from Evansville. I came over from Evansville, Indiana. He actually gave my first recruiting letter when I was a sophomore, and, uh, and that was really special to me. Um, Greg Colby, he took over as the outside linebacker coach after Coach Gamble left. Uh, John Makovic was actually the head coach when I got here. He was only here for one year before Lou Tepper took over. I, I obviously, Lou Tepper is, is a special coach for me because he really helped put me in position to become the player that I became. And so, uh, Coach Tepp, I love him. Um, the equipment staff, Andy Dixon and his whole staff. The training staff, Al Martindale and his entire staff. The, uh, the academic staff, Lynn Cialoni uh, and, and all her assistants. Uh, the sports information people, Mike Pearson, who's no longer here with the university, and also Kent Brown. Those guys, man, I still say those guys won the Buckets Award for me. <laughs> Because it was like, I remember that last year, I started doing these photo shoots. And I'm thinking, what in the hell? What, you know, I, we're doing photo shoots, and, 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 it's, and it's all this press and media you know, to, to prepare to, to promote the, the buckets and to promote the national awards. But I want to thank those guys for uh, everything they did for me there. Uh, there's a ton of other people. You, know, I, you, know, you can't thank everybody, but uh, I want to thank everybody you know, at the university that that, uh, that helped me get to the levels that I got to, uh, to my family. Um, unfortunately, my two sons couldn't be here because they are writing their stories now. I got a, uh, an older son who's a, he's a, he's a freshman at, at UConn. They got beat by Army today, but uh, he's, he, he's away doing that. I got a younger son who, who's played high school football down in Jacksonville uh, at Atlantic Coast High School. Obviously, they both wanted to come. I wouldn't let them because I know how important they are to their teams. And so uh, they'll catch this on YouTube. But uh, I wanted them you know, you know, to be able to stay with their teams and to begin to write their stories. Uh, to my family that's here, my sister, that's my older sister, uh, always looked up to her and everything that she did. Um, she's a couple years older than me. She went to Indiana, uh, scholar. Uh, goes on to Carnegie Mellon. 
just does tremendous things. She has a son that plays football at the University of Georgia, just a, a tremendous role model, and it was, uh, it's been a pleasure to follow in her footsteps. Um, I got a younger brother who's sitting here. I just wanted to be what she is to me, I wanted to be to him. I wanted to be a role model to him and, uh, and, and just set a good example. And I, I believe it's, I, you know, I've done that. I look at him and I look at his life. I look at, you know, you know he, he's got his family. They drove over from Evansville. I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to death of, 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 of the man that he is. Uh, his daughter, Kinsley, Cambry, Dominic, his girlfriend, Kara. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'm glad you were able to come. My girlfriend is here. She made the trip from Jacksonville. I appreciate you. Uh, and last but not least, my parents. I grew up, I was born in Washington, D.C., the Maryland area. And my dad, he moved the family outside Chicago when I was in first grade. Uh, for at the time, I mean, I don't know, but for him, it was a better opportunity for our family, for, you know, you know, just for our growth. And when I look back at it, all of my extended family is in, is on the East Coast. And for him to just pick up and move the family, uh, you know, it said a lot. But then in Illinois, he became my first coach uh, in every sport. And I played football, basketball, baseball, Every sport, he was my first coach in everything. From Illinois, we were going to move to Indiana for some of the same reasons, southern Indiana. And so I remember when I was uh, in fifth grade, he began to make the trip. He was, he was actually commuting from Salk Village, Illinois, to Evansville, Indiana, every single weekend. And at the time, I really didn't understand, but as I look back on it, he, He never missed a game. He never missed a game. He made that trip every single weekend, every sport. <laughs> we moved to Indiana. I came to Illinois. I was here five years, played four years. I can count on one hand how many games he missed home and away. He traveled everywhere. That support is unreal. I love you, man. Is it me or is it dusty in here? Man, they gotta get the State Farm together. All this dust. Kevin Hardy, y'all, Hall of Famer from the heart. What a tribute! All these backstories of how these Hall of Famers get here—they didn't get here by themselves—and that's a tremendous tribute to his dad and the family. Our next Hall of Famer was one of track and field's all-time superstars. His accomplishments are remarkable. 
And in fact, he was the very first athlete to grace the cover of a box of Wheaties. Phenomenal. Here is more on Bob Richards. Bob Richards, track and field. Bob Richards is the greatest pole vaulter in school history, while also earning a spot as one of the best U.S. vaulters in the history of the event. He was a three-time Olympic pole vaulter for the U.S., winning gold in 52 and 56 after earning a bronze medal in 48. Richards was a six-time NCAA champion and won 20 national AAU titles, including 17 in the pole vault and three as a decathlete. The most dominant vaulter of his time, Richards was ranked as the world's number one vaulter for eight consecutive years. He was the first athlete to appear on the front of the Wheaties cereal box in 1958 and was a national promoter of physical fitness. Richards was inducted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame in 1983 and the U.S. National Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1975. Now, Bob Richards is still living in Waco, Texas, and trust me, really, really, really wanted to be here today, but unfortunately was unable to travel back to campus. In fact, Bob was in touch with members of the Athletic Department and the Hall of Fame Committee as late as Tuesday of this past week and was hoping to travel back here to Champaign, but in the end decided he was not up for the trip. So we continue to work with Bob and his family and trying to get him back here to campus to properly honor him in person. We're pleased, however, that we were able to get a few comments from Bob talking about his beloved alma mater. The greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life was getting to the University of Illinois, not only in sports, but in everything else. I owe everything to the University of Illinois. Leo Johnson came to me. I was in a small college where I won five or six events but nothing like the University of Illinois. So he gave me a scholarship and I walked out on the field and here were the greatest athletes in the world, world record holders, Herb McKinley and others, Ed Guy Fettelman. It was an atmosphere of greatness. The University of Illinois was an atmosphere of greatness for me. We went all over the country, repeating great teams like Notre Dame is SC, but we were a powerhouse. And uh, that's the reason that I really became a, an Olympic athlete is because the University of Illinois had such a great atmosphere of greatness and gave me an opportunity to be the best. Was in the Halls of Fame and speaking Halls of Fame and in, in leadership, halls hall of fame in the Olympics, the Illinois was the background for all these great things that happened to me in my life. Congratulations again to Bob Richards. Just give him a round of applause. Now let's talk about another Illini great who went on to tremendous success after a stellar career here playing college basketball. Our next honoree, arguably one of the most accomplished NBA players ever to come from the University of Illinois basketball program. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Harper. Derek Harper, basketball. Derek Harper earned second team All-America and first team All-Big Ten honors in 1983 after leading the Illini to the NCAA tournament. Following his outstanding junior season, Harper declared himself eligible for the NBA draft and was the number 11 overall pick by the Dallas Mavericks, who retired his number 12 jersey in 2018. During his 16-year NBA career as a point guard, Harper played in nearly 1,200 games while scoring more than 16,000 points and averaging 5.5 assists. He was selected to the Illinois All-Century team in 2005. Congratulations to Hall of Famer Derek Harper, who still lives in Dallas. We look forward to hosting Harp back here at a basketball game in the near future so we again can honor him in person. We were able, though, to record some comments from Derek about being inducted into the Class of 2020 Hall of Fame. To God be the glory. Man, I am so excited, so honored. 
uh, so grateful to be going to the Illinois Hall of Fame. It's a uh, tremendous honor to, uh, to be one of many guys. I'd like to start by congratulating the other nominees that are going to be going in with me. And I'm going to try to start from the top and end on the top, if that's humanly possible. But that's my plan when it comes to who I'm going to thank for my time at Illinois. There are a lot of people, so bear with me. And clearly, this kind of accomplishment doesn't happen without other people. So I'm going to start right off the top and thank Rod Cardinal, a guy that I have a lot of respect and love for. And more importantly, I trust dearly. Uh, in my time at the University of Illinois. From there, I want to say thank you to the coaching staff at the University of Illinois, uh, obviously led by the late, great Lou Henson. Lou was one of the most prepared coaches that I've ever been around, and I've been around quite a few coaches. Then there's the GOAT as far as why I ended up at the University of Illinois. That's Tony Yates. He spent sleepless nights down in West Palm Beach to finally lure me to the U of I. Then there's Coach Nagy. Coach Nagy is a, a, a tremendous coach, uh, a guy that wouldn't allow any Illinois basketball player to take a shortcut. I love you, Coach, dearly. We had a very unique relationship, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I'm going to go to Dan Smith, who was an assistant coach, and kind of a special coach because he was kind of a mental wellness coach. And let me tell you, what he taught me when it comes to relaxing and getting the best out of my abilities is unmatched. Bob Hall was kind of the video coordinator at the time, and it takes a village to be successful. And he certainly played a role during that time, my time at the University of Illinois. How do you not thank the guys that you played with, you played with? Uh, gosh, when I got to Illinois, there was so much talent there. Perry Range, Sherrod Arnold, um, Craig Tucker, Brian Leonard, Kevin Bontemp, Derek Holcomb, uh, Bruce Douglas, Ephraim Winters, uh, Reggie Woodard, uh, Jay Daniels, George Montgomery, Anthony Welch. The list goes on and on. James Griffin, don't want to forget a guy like that. Eddie Johnson, Mark Smith, the late Mark Smith. Uh, those guys played a role. I have a lot of respect for them and love for them. And if the people that I miss, it's not because of lack of respect and love. I, I love and appreciate all the guys that I rubbed shoulders with throughout my tenure at the University of Illinois. Again, this is a tremendous honor. Words does not put it in perspective how I feel about going into the Illinois Hall of Fame. I'm grateful. And this is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And God bless all of you. I wish I could be there. Congratulations, Harp. Certainly look forward to having you back here on campus soon. Well, we have now reached our final Hall of Fame recipient for the class of 2020, and it's one that may be the most fresh in our minds. She had a standout volleyball career here at Illinois. However, since this induction ceremony and the 2020 Olympics were both postponed a year to 2021, it's allowed us to also welcome back her to campus as the very first ever Illini female gold medalist. Here's Olympic champion, Michelle Barst-Hackley. Michelle Barch-Hackley, Volleyball. Michelle Barch-Hackley was one of the most well-rounded stars in Fighting Illini Volleyball history. She earned All-America recognition her last three seasons at Illinois from 2009 to 2011 and helped lead the Illini to the NCAA Sweet 16 three times and to the national championship match in 2011. Michelle has been a U.S. national team member since 2016 and most recently started every match in helping the United States to a gold medal at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. From Tokyo, back here to Champaign, the golden girl who is now an orange and blue Hall of Famer, Michelle Barnes hackley can't see anyone, so this is great. I am the worst public speaker of all time, and luckily for you guys, this will be the shortest speech. 
Um, I'm much better at volleyball, I promise, but public speaking has never been my thing since Speech 101, my poor professor here. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone. Thank you for coming today. Thank you to my family and friends, my coaches, and for the athletic department for this great honor, and ILL. Short and sweet, but we see certainly got it done. Can we give all of our Hall of Famers a big round of applause, standing ovation. What a major accomplishment that will live on forever, as they said, an exclusive club. You are Illinois Athletics Hall of Famers. That is fantastic. What a way to cap off a very memorable day of Fighting Illini history. Again, congratulations to all of you. Uh, before we wrap things up, I want to give a really big shout out and thank you to all of the folks who helped make this day, this ceremony possible, who've worked hard at this point for two years. I mean, it's better late than never. I know you all were supposed to be honored a year ago, but I'm sure you're enjoying it just as much today right now. Uh, the entire staff from the Fighting Illini Productions, Daryl Miles and his staff, give them a big hand, all these wonderful videos, this beautiful production. They do an outstanding job. And also, the people here at the State Farm Center, the crew, give them a hand. They do a fantastic job. And the entire Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame staff, Marty Kaufman, Bobby Busboom. I know you like to stay in the background, but she makes this whole machine work. Thank you to all of your tireless work and efforts. And thanks for having me back to, to host this. It really means a lot to me as someone who bleeds orange and blue. Uh, this is the fourth uh, induction cer ceremony. I believe I've been involved with three of them. So it is... Uh, a highlight of my year. It, I love the stories. They're so inspiring as a storyteller to hear um, the stories and, and the inspiration that have gotten you all to this incredible achievement. It's so inspiring and encouraging, and congratulations to you all. Before we close, can we stand one more time? You know what time it is? Before we leave, we're going to play Hail to the Orange and kick it old school, so let's do it. Go Alina. That's it. Enjoy. <laughs> Autographs, pictures. I see Kevin's got a bottle open, so we just turn up. <laughs>